Hello and welcome to this tips and tricks video on converting a topology optimized STL to a solid to perform a design validation. We'll start by opening up our completed topology optimization. The first thing you want to make sure that is checked is that you're under post processing in the solutions tab is to make sure the export topology STL file is set to yes and whatever you have set for the topology density here, um, that is what will be transferred out in the design validation. So here we're going to set it to 0.6. And then we can go back to Workbench, right click on the results, and click Transfer to Design Validation System. So after that's done, we'll right mouse button on the results and click Update. And then on our geometry, we'll go ahead and click Refresh. So once that's done, we'll go ahead and open up our geometry in SpaceClaim. And once that model is open in SpaceClaim, you'll notice that the original geometry is shown there. We're just going to hide those for now. And then here we see the facets, our faceted geometry has been imported, but by default it is suppressed. You can unsuppress them by clicking activate for physics and then the first thing you're going to want to do here is go to the facets tab and then auto fix and select all the facets this will clean up and fix any problems that it can automatically after that's done it's good to go and click separate all and then this will separate out the faceted body so then we're going to go through and hide the main features that we're going to want to keep. And once those are all gone, we see we have all these kind of random remaining facets. So we're going to select them all in the tree and delete. And then show that. So then once those are, all those little pieces are separated and deleted, we're going to go ahead and merge all of these facets together using this merge tool and then just clicking on these faceted bodies. So now you can see we have one faceted body. And then next we're going to go and use the shrink wrap tool on this body. So we're going to click that and we're going to set this to one millimeter and you can kind of see the scale right there and we're just going to go ahead and perform the shrink wrap so then after the shrink wrap is done we'll go ahead and use the smooth tool as you can see there's a lot of sharp edges so we're going to try to smooth that out and get rid of them so we'll click smooth and then we're going to go with the maximum angle allowed and we're going to choose add facets for this example and then go ahead and click the check mark and you can see how that has smoothed it out and made it much cleaner and got rid of a lot of those sharp edges so once that's done we have the option to go ahead and repeat the process to try to get it a little bit more smoothed out so to do this we're going to go and reduce the total number of facets. I'm using the reduce tool. So we're gonna, in this example, we're gonna reduce all of the facets and restrict it to have a maximum deviation of 0.5 millimeters. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then here we can see larger facets, but significantly less number of total facets. And so we're gonna go and do an additional shrink wrap on that. And we'll do the same one millimeter gap sizing. And once that's completed, we'll go ahead and do one more smooth. So we have done. And so here we can see we have a nice smoothed STL geometry. So the next step is going to be adding these excluded regions from our optimization back to the geometry. So we're going to start by hiding our faceted geometry and show the original. We're going to go ahead and hide this one. And we're going to go and make cutter bodies. So we're just going to grab those faces, control C, control V, 
that will create four surfaces. And we're going to go ahead and this one we can actually just have one. And we're going to fill these. And then we're going to pull a little bit extra on this one since we're going to use it to cut both. And then just a little bit on these just to make sure that we cut out everything we want. So now that we have those cutters, let's show our faceted geometry. We can go back to the facets and use the subtract tool. So then we're going to click our faceted body and then just click on the cutter bodies we have made. And so here we can see that it got rid of everything. We're actually going to go and to each of these, we're going to make them slightly smaller than the actual bodies that we'll be replacing them with to have a little bit of overlap. And so then we'll just go back to our subtract tool and cut these out. And we can see we still have the outer shape of that. So then we can go and show these bodies. This one we don't really need, so we'll just suppress it or you can delete it. And then we're going to go and use the merge tool under the facets. And then we're going to click our faceted body and then just go ahead and click each of these bodies that we want to merge. And as we click them, they'll be converted to facets or a faceted body and will be merged. And as we can see now, we have one faceted body that has our nice clean exclusion regions. And at this point, you can do one more reduce. Since having a large number of facets can be challenging uh, for the measure and can be nice just to kind of reduce a lot of those. And once that's done, we'll go ahead, convert to solid, do not merge faces. And then we'll close out the space claim, refresh. So then we'll go and open up our model. And then we'll go ahead and assign the structural steel to the body. This body sizing that was previously used, we're going to delete it. And instead, we're going to insert a method. Select the body, and we're going to choose tetrahedrons here and make it patch independent so that it isn't dependent on all the facets. And so for a minimum size limit, we're just going to go and do 0.05 on there, and the max, say, half an inch. And... Yeah, so we'll just go ahead and let that mesh. And we can see once that's done, we have a nice mesh that we'll be able to then solve from. So we're going to go to add our boundary conditions. By double clicking on one of the faces in here, it will select all. So we're going to do that for both of these and click apply for that remote boundary condition. And then on the force, we are going to do the same thing, and then we can go ahead and solve. So once that's done solving, you can take a look at total deformation plot, equivalent stress, and compare those values to the original results. So here we're at about 10,000 PSI, and then our optimized part is at 13,000. Um, so pretty close, a little bit higher, as we would expect with less material. With that, I'll conclude this tips and tricks video. Thanks for watching.